What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome to week four of the CFL. This week, we're going up against Austin, coach of the Virginia Volcaronas, and it is going to be a very tough match because Austin is a very good battler, and we'll see how this team performs. It's a very odd team, so I recommend checking out the team builder. But without further ado, let's, um, let's hop into it. Okay, so at first glance, this team looks scary. <laughs> this team looks very scary. I think it looks like hyper offense. Um, yeah, this team looks super offensive, actually. We'll see how much Rillaboom can do. Yeah, we'll see how much Rillaboom can do. But if I had to guess... Oh, he's got a whole bunch of U-turn going on, and probably setup drill, and then just like a sponge tangela. <laughs> we'll see. Um, I think either way, I lead with Ditto, just to see. At first glance, um, let's say, let, let's just take a second real quick. I think Rapidash could put in a lot of work here. Yeah, Rapidash can definitely put in work. Halucha can put in a lot of work too. Halucha could be a very real win condition, which means he might try to save Gale Wings on Talonflame for that. I wouldn't be surprised if he was Scarf Excadrill. Or Scarf... Scarf, one of the two dragons are Excadrill, I would say. I wouldn't be surprised if it was like a Screens... Grimmsnarl. Yeah, Grimmsnarl is scary. Let's see. We'll lead off with Ditto. I want to see what... I want to learn about whatever Pokemon he brings. Oh, I need I need to get a piece of paper or something to write. I'm going to run and grab that real quick. <laughs> okay. Sorry for the wait, Austin. So he leads off with the Tangela. Whew. Um, toxic, Knockoff, Leech Seed, Giga Drain, and Protect. Pretty expected, I guess. None of my Pokemon want to experience either a knockoff or a toxic, unfortunately. But I also kind of want to toxic him, honestly. And this could be an opportunity to get up my rocks with Blissey. Do I mind if Blissey loses its leftovers? Not a ton. I'll switch out. Yeah, so I figured that would be the case. So Tangela has Knock, Toxic, Leech, and Giga Drain. All right. So he can either Leech Seed here. He may go into something anticipating the Stealth Rock going up. I'm OK with going for Stealth Rock here, though. Now, I can pretty safely teleport, actually. As he goes, Excadrill. And he is Mold Breaker. Okay. Let's see, what kind of Excadrill are you? What kind of Excadrill are you? Do I want to go Ditto right off the bat? Hmm. Do I want to go Ditto and just figure out what type of drill he is? Or do I go into Rillaboom? I think going Rillaboom and clicking Knockoff is the safe option. Mmm, I want to learn. Yeah, I should just go Ditto. What kind of drill are you? You are Leftovers. And you have... Okay, you have Rapid Spin. High Horsepower. Iron Head and Rocks. Okay, so we know what kind of set he is. 
the question is, is he going to stay in to go for Stealth Rock? Or do I just right off the bat attack with something like High Horsepower? Let's see here. He may be a kind of bulky set. We'll see here. If he's got leftovers, he's probably on the bulkier side. High horsepower. I mean, the thing is, he has a base 110 HP. I have a base 48 HP. So his high horsepower would obliterate me. I guaranteed outspeed him here. Let's see here. How much would high horsepower do? How much HP would he need to survive it? He would need a lot. What would he go into? Talonflame? Salamence? I think, especially because I know he's not set up, I can pretty safely go into Umbreon here. As he goes Tangela. Okay. So he fears... Okay. I see, that's a pretty safe switch in for him. He could knock off here. I don't really want that to happen. I can... I think it's in my best interest to just go back into Blissey. As he goes for Leech Seed again, which is fine for now. Yeah, that's fine for now. This Tangela is set up fodder for Halucha. Hmm. I'll teleport again. He goes for Toxic. Wouldn't have mattered. Now here is the question. I think I go Rillaboom here, because he'll stay in to try to knock off or Toxic. And I can just knock him off after I set up a substitute. Yeah. So I'm going to set up a substitute here. As he probably stays in to knock off or Toxic. And that's not going to do too much. And now we can just knock off. <laughs> We're not doing a whole lot either. But he is certainly not doing a whole lot. And more importantly, I think... What's it called? I mean, we have leftovers and such. And at this point, I think we're already doing okay. If only due to the fact that we have, like, Halucha in the back and everything. We can substitute again here. He Giga Drains, but it's not going to do enough. And the Grassy Terrain goes away. So he's probably going to Giga Drain here. How much is that going to do to um, Halucha? How much would Giga Drain do? Giga Drain would not do that. I'll knock off again because I don't want him going for Toxic or knock off, anticipating the switch. I can substitute again here. If he's going to go for knock off or Toxic on a turn, I think this would be it. Okay, let's see what he wants to do here. Is he going to taunt me? He goes for Reflect. Okay, unsurprisingly, a bit of a setup set. And he's Bulk Up. Okay, we'll knock off here. He has an Aguav Berry. Okay, so... Do we outspeed this thing? We probably don't. We also don't take a lot of damage from him. 
So we can actually just spam Substitute at this point. Oh, we outspeed him. As he goes for Drain Punch. Hmm. Hmm. Reflect, Bulk Up, Drain Punch. And then one other attack, presumably. We outspeed him, but we're not getting a lot of HP back, unfortunately. Hmm. It really depends a lot on what his last move is. Is he going to bulk up again? I think I substitute again here. He doesn't bulk up again. He goes for another Drain Punch. I think either way... I'm already kind of running low on substitutes too, <laughs> which is not very good. But his Reflect is going to be gone after this turn. I really want to know whether or not he has a Fairy move or a Dark-type move for his last move, because that drastically changes whether or not Halucha can come in. Because otherwise I don't have a great way of dealing with this thing, honestly. I'll substitute again so that the Reflect goes away. I think I can go... What's it called? Rapidash here? We'll see here. Grim Snarl. We'll, we'll go the bulk up set. He's Drain Punch. I mean, at plus one, it's gonna do a lot. I think I'm gonna go for it, though. He goes for the Drain Punch, okay. So we are in. Now, is he going to go Tangela? Probably. That's his safe bet. However, even if he goes Tangela, I can very safely go back into Blissey. So, I'm just going to play rough here. It was Excadrill. Interesting. We hit, which is great. That did 37. Nice. We got an attack decrease, which is actually also really nice. Now, we definitely outspeed this thing. And we can go for high horsepower. Does he anticipate that? Probably. Is he going to take this opportunity to go into his Tangela? Possibly. But I'm okay with that for now. We go for high horsepower and we knock it out. Awesome. So, Drill is dead. I should also write down what Grim Snarl is up to. So it is Reflect, Bulk Up, and Drain Punch. It had an Aguave Berry, but Drill is dead. So that is the end of Stealth Rock on his team. So we don't need to worry about Stealth Rocks, which is awesome. Talonflame comes in, it is Heavy Duty Boots. And it's probably just going to U-turn here, if I'm honest. He could Taunt, he could Will-O-Wisp, he could Substitute, he could Bulk Up. I'm not entirely sure. This Pokemon is definitely scary. I think I go Umbreon here, though. As he U-turns. Okay. I should have gone Ditto, but that's okay. So he's U-turn and does 22% to Umbreon. So we can calculate how much damage that actually is. So here is our Umbreon. Let's go to Talonflame. If he is max attack Jolly, how much would U-turn do? 22.8% maximum. 
Okay, and he goes Flygon. So he is probably max attack. He could be Jolly. Let's see, if he's Adamant, what's the minimum roll? Okay, so he could be Jolly or Adamant, but he's probably max attack plus something else. And it seems more offensive. What is this thing going to do? It could U-turn as well. However, I would prioritize getting off a of Toxic right now. Or he could First Impression. I'm going to protect on the First Impression. He U-turns. Okay. So, I'm okay with him U-turning if I get off a of Toxic, so that's what we're going to do. And he only gets 17% off. And he goes Tangela, please land! Please, please, please land! Yes! We Toxic the Tangela, which is huge. That's actually huge. So, let's calc real quick. How much did that Flygon do? Let's see here. If he is Scarf Flygon, U-turn would do... So this is max attack, Scarf Flygon would do 22 to 26. However, his U-turn only did 17%. So if he were like a mixed attacking set, no, he can't have plus two attack, or plus attack at all. If he has zero attack investment, his U-turn could do as low as 17%. And his did what, 17.3. So he's not, so yeah, he could have, he probably has very little. Yeah, he can't have more than this much attack. So he's probably a special, whether that's specs or not. Um, this thing, I'm okay with being here for now, so I'm going to just protect, get a little bit of leftovers, and um, let him take some toxic damage. And then I can pretty safely go into Blissey now, which it seems will be more helpful for Flygon than anything. Yeah, I'm just going to go hard Blissey here. As he Toxics, which is okay. Because he is taking a lot of damage. And what we can do now... Is he going to switch? If so, into what? I can probably just teleport here as well. Because he's probably going to switch. He just Giga Drains. I'm surprised. But that's okay. Because now we can go into Rillaboom and set up a substitute. Or we can go Halucha and set up a substitute. No, Talonflame's still at max HP. I think that would be a bit premature. Yeah, we can, um... We can go Rillaboom here. And then we can just uh, substitute very safely. And if he goes into Grim Snarl, I think we can actually two hit KO that with Grassy Glide. And he goes Flygon, which means he's probably going to U-turn here. I'm just going to Grassy Glide and get some damage off. We do 55, which is awesome. As he goes for Fire Blast. And we're going to be back at full HP. I think I still Grassy Glide here, notably because it'll take Talonflame, even if he goes into that, out of max HP range. Or do I take this opportunity to heal up with Blissey? No, I don't really need Blissey that much. I think I just... Grassy Glide again? Yeah, I think I just Grassy Glide. So Flygon is dead. And that was probably Specs. Okay, so Flygon is dead. And in comes this thing. This thing is my nightmare. <laughs> this thing is my nightmare. So I think I just go hard into Umbreon here. Because I think Umbreon is the best suited. It doesn't help that there are no, I guess, recent Salamence sets. But um, I don't know what type of set he is. But even, you know, Outrage and stuff, I think Umbreon can tank a hit pretty well. So I think we're going to go hard into Umbreon here. 
as he dragon dances. Okay. Which is perfect because he is not heavy duty boots, notably. And I don't think we'll die to any plus one hit. But notably, at plus one, I think he dies guaranteed to foul play. Yeah, so we will just foul play here. Goes for Fire Fang, hoping to flinch, I think. He gets the burn, which is unfortunate. Um, and he's Life Orb. And so, because he got burnt, he ended up living. <laughs> this is That was such an interesting turn. <laughs> so it's unfortunate that Eevee got burnt. Or um, Umbreon got burnt, because that'll... Be a, uh, that'll make it relatively diff more difficult for it to deal with Talonflame later on. However, because it got burnt, because Salamence's attack got halved because of the burn after it did the damage, it, um, what's it called? <laughs> well, basically, my foul play would have knocked it out had it not gotten burnt. So it did the damage to me at plus one, and then I got burnt, and then he got burnt, which allowed him to survive the foul play. However... I may actually be able to take advantage of this if I go for a wish here. So I'm going to do that. He goes for Outrage. I thought if he didn't if he tried to dragon dance again, I could have gone into Ditto potentially, but maybe wish wasn't the play there. Actually, no it is because I can pretty safely protect next turn. I think he's going to try to take this opportunity to set up with his Grim Snarl. And I don't think I outspeed him, but I may live an attack. I think I need to Toxic here. As he bulks up. Perfect. So we get that right. We hit. We miss! Are you kidding me? Of course. Of course. Of course. Because that's how it always goes. Um, we need a toxic. Okay, and we land. And do we speed tie? I think we speed tie. That's crazy, actually. <laughs> no, we don't speed tie. I outspeed him. Duh. It's because the bulk up was a uh, priority because of Prankster. Okay, so what I can do then... Ah, uh, Eevee's low HP, unfortunately. I want to know what his last move is. But if he attacks me... I think I still protect here so he gets some damage, and then I wish and go into... Halucha. It'll depend a lot on what his last move is. I think I protect here either way, though. He may read it and go for another bulk up, which is okay by me. Man, this wouldn't even been a problem if I hit that first Toxic. I could wish protect stall this thing, because Drain Punch isn't doing more than 50%. So I think he's going to Drain Punch again here. I do want to save Ditto. What do I not need anymore? I don't need Rapidash. It doesn't help out too much anymore compared to everything else. So I think I'm just going to go into Rapidash here. If he knocks it out with a great read, that's awesome for him. But if not, that's okay. Okay. And now I think we just click Play Rough. We'll see if he has Sucker Punch or not. If he does, it'll knock me out. But then he's definitely dead next turn anyways. So we'll play rough here as he goes for Reflect. To potentially set up with Talonflame, maybe? As he goes Talonflame. Okay, and this is where things could get scary. This is definitely where things could get scary. I think we could try Zen headbutting this to see if it's going to set up or not.
It's do I go ditto right away or not? I think I zen. He brave birds. Okay, which is fine, because now he's not at full HP. I don't really need that Pokemon anyways. And I can eventually get him into range where... Okay, yeah, that's, that's the key here. I need to... I can reverse sweep him with his own Talonflame. That's the key here. Brave Bird is going to do like 60 to 75%. So what my play here is, is to go Blissey. Well, I actually need to stall out a couple turns of Protect, I think. He's U-Turn and Brave Bird. How much recoil would he take from killing Blissey? Like 35% or so. Reflect only has a few more turns. I think I go into Umbreon. And I threaten him with Toxic. And Foul Play, for that matter. I just don't want him to be Substitute. But if he's Max Attack, my Substitute... I would break his um, Substitute even through the Reflect. Yeah, I, I remember this from the Calc. So... Foul Play does just over half if he's max attack, and which we're pretty sure he is. So I can just click Foul Play here as he goes for Brave Bird. And so we are slowly but surely whittling away at him. And we live this turn, which is important, because after this turn... Oh, I should have Toxic if that were the case. No, I still stand by going for Foul Play. Now we go Blissey on the Brave Bird. Yes! So he takes a bunch of damage and notably is now low HP. And is prone to getting reverse swept by another by his own Talonflame. Okay, so now we can go Ditto and click Brave Bird. And I think that'll do it. Yep. Whew. And then, yeah, we definitely beat this thing with Rillaboom, so. Good game, Austin. Whew. That was... That definitely had its scary moments, mostly just from the unknown of what was going on with some of his Pokemon, just how I mentioned earlier with the, with during the team builder with the versatile sets, um, it was really difficult to sometimes know what he was gonna do. But I really appreciated having Ditto in this match, and yeah, um, Halucha didn't even come out. Uh, Ditto was really really helpful this time around. Rillaboom got to do its thing a little bit. <laughs> um, Umbreon put in a ton of work, like always. And Galarian Rapidash was even a bit of a threat. So, overall, um, though this game was a bit quicker, and I felt maybe a little bit more in control, I thought it was actually a really good game. And I'd be curious to see what the last move was on that Grim Snarl, because it gave me so much, uh, so much anxiety. And the Salamence, um, I'm, I'm glad that was such, <laughs> that was such an interesting interaction with Umbreon. But Umbreon, yeah. Um, it did its mixed walling things very well. I'm glad we had teleport just for the momentum with Blissey. And yeah, um, good stuff, Austin. You're a great competitor. And I look forward to potentially playing you in the playoffs. And I hope those of you watching enjoyed the match. Uh, if you did, uh, please look forward to next week where we're going up against James, a match I've been looking forward to slash dreading since the very beginning of the season. He is the person who drafted Dracovish and Rain and Volcarona, which were all of the things I was planning on drafting in my original idea. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a scary match and a really good one, hopefully. So, hope you guys are looking forward to that. But 
Until the next match, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete.